It was businessman, investor, and philanthropist Warren Buffett that said, someone is sitting in a shade right now because someone planted a tree a long time ago. In this lesson, we're gonna demonstrate the use of change of base formula. We will explain and apply the one-to-one -one property. We will explain and apply the power property. We will determine the term of systematic savings, and we will determine the term of a systematic withdrawal. All to answer the question, how long should I make deposits to reach my goal, and how long can I make withdrawals before running out of money? To make sure we're ready for this lesson, let's take a look at warm-up number two and simplify each of the following expressions where R is 0.036, N is four, and A is two. We'll round to the nearest hundredth. So the first one being one plus R over N to the A power will give us one plus 0.036 over four squared. This will give us 1.018. The second one gives us one plus R over N all over R over N. By substituting in our values and using a calculator, we're gonna get 112.111. And one minus the sum of one plus R over N to the negative A power. We substitute in all of those values and get 0.018. Now let's take a look at a problem you will be able to do by the end of this lesson. Lauren has deposited $100,000 into an account that compounds interest monthly at a rate of 1.08%. Each month, they withdraw $500 from the account. How long will it take them until the account reaches zero? Now we have already seen the equation for this. So what we need to do is substitute those values, giving us 100,000 is equal to 500 times one minus the sum of one and 0 0.0108 divided by 12, all to the negative 12 T power, all divided by 0 0.0108 divided by 12. 100,000 divided by 500 will give us 200. It's important to notice that 0.0108 divided by 12 is 0.0009. We can go ahead and substitute that in and do a little bit of easy calculation. Multiplying both sides by 0.0009, we get 0.18 is equal to 1 minus 1.0009 to the negative 12t power. Now we subtract 1 from both sides to get negative 0.82 is equal to a negative 1 times 1.0009 to the negative 12t power. Let's just clean this up by multiplying both sides by negative 1 so we can have positive symbols. We can then take the log of both sides, apply the power property to the right side, and divide both sides by a negative 12 times log 1.0009 to give us t all by itself, which is approximately 18.4. In the lessons on future value of investments and present values of investments, we examine saving situations where the same amount of money was deposited into a savings account at regular intervals over a period of time. Those deposits were known as periodic deposits. An account into which periodic deposits are made are known as a systematic savings account. Customers can easily make systematic deposits into savings accounts by setting up direct deposits from their paycheck or from other accounts. With money going into these accounts on a regular basis, it is important that the consumer choose the right account term. In the future value investment lesson, we explored the situation in which you wanted to determine a future balance in an account given an interest rate, the compounding period, the term, and the amount of the periodic deposit. The formula for the future value of a periodic deposit is on the screen. In the lesson on present value of investments, we explored the situations where you want to determine how much you need to deposit periodically to meet a particular monetary goal given an investment rate, the compounding period, and the term. The formula for the present value of a periodic deposit is on the screen.
In each of those situations, the variable t represented time or term of the independent variable, and it was a fixed amount. In this lesson, we will look at a situation where the term is the dependent variable. In other words, you solve each equation for the exponent t. In order to solve for term t, we're going to use a combination of algebraic transformations and logarithmic equivalencies. To do so, there are properties of logs that can be used to simplify logarithmic expressions. Such logs are exponents. These properties are directly related to the properties of exponents that you have studied in previous math courses. In this lesson, we're going to examine how to apply the properties of logs in a systematic savings account. Now, as you know, there are often many ways to solve math problems. When these problems involve exponents, it may be possible to simplify the process by using logs. These examples that follow will offer a new method of problem solving that uses two logarithmic properties. In the last lesson, we determined that logs could be used to find the term of a single deposit savings account when using the compound interest formula. Jake is considering depositing money into a savings account that pays 1.2% interest compound monthly. Write a general compound interest formula for a single deposit savings situation and use logarithms to write an expression in terms of t. We know that the formula that we're going to use is b is equal to p times 1 plus r over n to the nt power. We'll divide both sides by p. We'll then turn it into a logarithm and divide both sides by n. Then we'll substitute in all of the values for the variables that we know. It would be helpful to go ahead and Take that 1 plus 0 0.012 divided by 12 and simplify that to 1.001. .001. Let's check our understanding of this. Martina deposits $200 in account that pays 1% interest compound quarterly. Write an expression for how long it will take for her initial deposit to grow to $300, but don't evaluate the logarithm. Now we know the T formula based on our last example. So we substitute all of the values into the equation. And we simplify the terms within the equation so that we get log base 1.0025 of 1.5, all divided by 4. Suppose that in example 1, Jake's goal was to have a balance of $1,000 after an initial deposit of $800. Substituting into the expression you found in example 1, you get that t is log base 1.001 .001 of 1,000 over 800, all over 12. Since 1,000 over 800 is equivalent to 1.25, the equation can be rewritten as t is equal to log base 1.001 .001 of 1.25 over 12. As mentioned in the last lesson, most calculators do not have keys that can find logs other than common logs or natural logs. There are two equivalent methods for finding the terms of the account. You learned the first method in the section on term for a single deposit account to use the change of base formula where we have the log base 1.001 .001 of 1.25 is equal to the log of 1.25 divided by log of 1.001. .001. This will give us approximately 223.26. If we divide that by 12, we get approximately 18.6. It would be a little over 18 and a half years for $800 to grow to $1,000 through interest alone. There is an alternative way of solving the same problem using the following properties of logs that we're going to use in the next example. Let's begin with the one-to-one -one property. Log base b of m is equal to log base b of n if and only if m is equal to n. Next, examine the second property known as the power property. Given that m, n, and b are positive real numbers where b is not zero, then log base b of m to the c power is equal to c times log base b of m. 
or log m to the c power is equal to c times log m. We're going to apply these properties in the example that follows. Now let's explain and imply the one-to-one -one property. Let's use the property of logarithms to solve example one in a different way and show how these properties yield the same result as the method that Jake used. Now we already know what that t function is going to equal through just a couple of steps to get there. We also know the value of b and p being 1000 and 800. Now those are equivalent to 1.25. The one plus r over n would be one plus 0 0.012 divided by 12, which is equivalent to 1.001. 1 so if we substitute these into this original equation, instead of having to look at something that looks like an alphabet soup, we get something much neater like 1.25 is equal to 1.001 .001 to the 12t power. We can take the log of both sides. The power property lets us rewrite the right side as 12t times the log of 1.001. .001. We can divide both sides by the log of 1.001 .001 so that we get the log of 1.25 divided by the log of 1.001 .001 is equal to 12t. Dividing both sides by 12, we can see that t is approximately 18.6 years. Let's check our understanding and use the one-to-one -one property and the power property to solve for t in 3.6 is equal to 1.5 to the 5t power and round the answer to the nearest tenth. We can rewrite this as a log. Use the power property on the right side to put 5t is equal to log of 1.5 and divide both sides by 5 log of 1.5, giving us log of 3.6 divided by 5 log of 1.5 is equal to t, which is approximately 0.6. Let's extend our understanding even farther and suppose that in example one, Jake's account was compounding continuously. The continuous compound formula is b is equal to p times e to the rt with b being 1000, p 800, r 0 0.12, would yield the following equation. 1000 is equal to 800 e to the 0 0.012 t power. The two properties of logarithms also apply to natural logs. Divide both sides of the equation by 800 and apply a one-to-one -one property by taking the natural log of both sides. Then the power property to determine the value of t to the nearest tenth. Keep in mind that ln of e is equal to 1. So we have 1.25 is equal to e to the 0.012 t power. We take the ln of both sides, apply the power property to the right side, giving us 0.012t times ln of e. Now let's remember that the ln of e is equal to one, one times anything is itself. We get ln of 1.25 divided by 0.012 is equal to t, which gives us approximately 18.6. Now let's determine the term of a systematic savings. Gary and Ann want to make monthly deposits of $400 into a savings account, which offers 1.95% interest compound monthly. How long will it take the account balance to grow to $10,000? So first up is to remember the equation that we're gonna be using. Then to substitute in all of the values that we know for this equation. Let's first simplify it a little bit. First, we get rid of the fraction that's on the outside by multiplying both sides by 0 0.0195 and then dividing by 12 to make the left side turn to 16.125. We then divide both sides by 400, turning the left side to 0 0.040625. We then add one to the left and right side, making the left into 1.040625. And as long as we're doing some simple calculations, we're gonna take 0 0.0195 divided by 12, add one, and turn the whole parenthesis term into 1.001625 and raise to the 12t power. We then take a log of both sides, Apply the power property to the right side so that we have 12t times the log of 1.001625. 
divide both sides by 12 log 1.001625, leaving T by itself on the right side. This gives us approximately 2.04. Let's check our understanding of this as Phyllis has opened up a systematic savings account into which she deposits $200 per month, compound monthly, at a rate of 1.26%. How long will it take her account to reach $5,000? We are going to round our answer to the nearest tenth. So we're going to solve this using the one-to-one -one property. B over P is equal to 5,000 over 200. That's gonna give us 25. One plus R over N is one plus 0 0.0126 divided by 12. That's gonna give us 1.00105. We're gonna apply the change of base formula at the same time. So we have the log of BP, which is 25, divided by the log of one plus R over N, which is the log of 1.00105. And we're going to divide all of that by N, which is 12. This means that T is approximately 2.1 years. Sometimes people set up accounts with an initial deposit. Then they withdraw money from the account at regular intervals. This is known as a systematic withdrawal account. These withdrawals can be done in person, but more often than not, the transactions are made through electronic direct withdrawals. The funds are often for expenses that occur on a regular basis, such as a loan payment, so that the withdrawal amount usually remains the same. The question arises as to how long the account will continue to have enough of a balance to support the withdrawals. In other words, how long will it take the account to drop to a balance of zero? The systematic withdrawal formula is on the screen where P is the principal, W is the periodic withdrawal amount, R is the interest rate expressed as a decimal, N is the number of times the interest is compounded annually, and T is the term of the account. In the next example, we're going to learn how to solve for T using the properties of logs. Now let's determine the term of a systematic withdrawal. Lauren has deposited $100,000 into an account that compounds interest monthly at a rate of 1.08%. Each month, they withdraw $500 from the account. How long will it take them until the account reaches zero? Now, we have already seen the equation for this. So, what we need to do is substitute those values, giving us 100,000 is equal to 500 times one minus the sum of one and 0 0.0108 divided by 12, all to the negative 12 T power, all divided by 0 0.0108 divided by 12. 100,000 divided by 500 will give us 200. It's important to notice that 0.0108 divided by 12 is 0.0009. We can go ahead and substitute that in and do a little bit of easy calculation. Multiplying both sides by 0.0009, we get 0.18 is equal to 1 minus 1.0009 to the negative 12t power. Now we subtract one from both sides to get negative 0.82 is equal to a negative one times 1.0009 to the negative 12t power. Let's just clean this up by multiplying both sides by negative one so we can have positive symbols. We can then take the log of both sides, apply the power property to the right side, and divide both sides by a negative 12 times log 1.0009 to give us T all by itself, which is approximately 18.4. Let's check our understanding of this and look at Ramin who deposited $40,000 into an account that compounds interest at a rate of 0.96% monthly. She is set up for a direct withdrawal of $256 every month to pay off her student loan. She has a 15-year loan. Will she have enough money in the account to cover all of the required loan payments? 
So we already know from the last problem what our big ugly formula is going to wind up being. So what we need to do is substitute in some values and then start cleaning things up a little bit. 40,000 divided by 256 is 156.25. 0 0.0096 divided by 12 is 0 0.0008. This is gonna be helpful for both the denominator as well as inside these parentheses where we can have 1.0008 to the negative 12t power. Multiply both sides by 0 0.0008, and the left becomes 0 0.125, and the right is 1 minus 1.0008 to the negative 12t power. Move one to the other side, subtracting it, it leaves us with a negative on both sides, so let's multiply both sides by negative one to make those positive. Now we can take the log of both sides. Then apply the power rule to the right side to get negative 12t times log of 1.0008. Divide both sides by negative 12 times the log of 1.0008. And on the ti30xa, we can say 1.0008 log times 12, that's negative, equals, and we're gonna store that in the calculator by doing STO1. Now we can say 0 0.875 log divide recall one equals. And we're gonna see that the time frame is 13.9 years.